light agenda for today. I've got uh, some announcements that I will defer to Salona, and then uh, we've got an URSA update. And I think that's about it. So I, I don't want to fill time that we don't need to fill. So if we're done in, in the first 30 minutes, uh, that will be good for everyone. Uh, if you I want, I, uh, I did the fabric update. I could give that. Sure, if we've got time, we, we could knock that out and that would get yeah. us ahead of things. Right. Um, so uh, just one other quick reminder, uh, we do keep a chat stream going on the TSC channel on uh, chat.hyperledger.org. Uh, and that's preferable to the, the chat facility that's in uh, this Zoom context. And then uh, with the, the quarterly project reports, uh, general expectation is that the TSC members have read them before the meeting and that we are not reading those reports out during the meeting, but we're just responding to things that uh, we're either not covered in the report or need additional uh, inspection. So with that, uh, if you want to take us through the announcements, Alona. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I'm back in San Francisco, so my allergies are horrible. So I apologize in advance for sneezing and snorting all over the place. Um, so we mainly only have two big things. One is we've got Bobby. I see that she's on. Um, and she sent out a survey for voting on the chair and she can give us the results on that. Um, but the three main things she's going to cover is, um, with Bobby taking it over, um, we've kind of done a, a little bit of a reboot with it. And so we're kind of looking at documentation best practices. So one of the big asks she's going to have is to getting the other teams, all the other projects to start participating in this work group and think about having a delegate join. Um, so that we can go over those best practices and survey how they're doing and do all of that. I don't know if any of y'all got to go look at the survey and vote that she put over here or the wiki content that she's put in previously, but she's done a, a really good job. So, um, Bobby, did you want to take it away? Sure, no problem. Thank you very much, Salona. That was a very nice introduction. Um, again, I am working with the people in the learning materials uh, working group and we're trying to get momentum going to have um, like a resource library or a spot for people to be able to um, put their information um, and uh, basically uh, find all the vetted documentation that they can use and grab and share to train and just to spread the word about what's going on. So let me just try to share my screen for a moment. Okay, that's not really working. Hold on just a moment. Oh, somebody else is still sharing the screen, so I can't take over. Rye, can you let Bobby share? I'm not sure if that's going to end the meeting, but I'll do it. Oh. There isn't a way to. So I think you should be able to take over it now, Bobby. Okay, let me just work on that for a second. There we go. Awesome. Okay, you should now be seeing the Learning Materials Development Working Group homepage. Is everybody seeing that? Yep. Got yes. it. Thank you. Good. Great. Excellent. So basically what we're trying to do um, with the learning materials working group is we're trying to make it really easy to onboard, grab a project and get some work done. Because that's a lot of like the shortfalls is people like we're working on stuff and not really sure where it was going to wind up. So we want to be able to house stuff so that people can find it. So we're working on our new members page. We want um, people to be able to go there and pick up information on how to either update edX or um, be able to to uh, review um, some GitHub work, or we need people, again, like Salona had said, to be a part of the other uh, working groups and special interest groups to find out what their learning material needs are and you know, when they're developing materials to be able to grab them for other people to use in other working groups so that they can be able to find them. Um, and there's just different, um, in a resource library, we're going to have a framework um, library and a tools library where you can get information on those frameworks and tools. And we want it to be up to date so it's not old information. So we need people to maintain those. So 
basically onboarding. That's how we're working on getting that initiative going. And again, we really want the um, universities involved. Um, so we have frequently asked questions and we're going to be, you know, building that section out so that people can jump on really quick. Um, another thing that we're working on um, is the resource page. And basically, again, that's going to be um, the information that um, has earned a best practice approval, um, which we're going to go over in a second. And it will have um, each framework will have, drop that down, up oh, there, too fast. Each framework will have a section. It'll have um, the links to all of the work that's been done by the other um, fabric people. We're not trying to, again, reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to house it and make sure that it is uh, through the standards that Hyperledger wants um, or, you know, just is protocol. Same thing for the tools. We're going to build out the tools page so that each one of those, again, um, has links to the current um, information. Um, and then the only other thing really with the resource page is that best practices. Um, and let me see where that is. So we're working on the best practice resource checklist. Uh, we have some information for best practices for courseware. We're going to work on best practices for presentation, white papers, and webinar. Um, and again, all the, the documentation that people created, somebody should, you know, just have eyes on to see that it follows these best practices, which have yet to obviously uh, are in development. Um, the next section again is the edX updates, which I'm not sure if Salona um, and I are still working on figuring out how that's going to flow through. So how people in the working group are going to get um, project requests and how they're going to, um, you know, work on them and get them back out to the people um, who need to update the GitHub and the edX courses. So Bobby, that's about the JIRA integration that's going to come in later. And so what's going to happen is the certification crew is going to start putting in things through JIRA and it's going to integrate in with that page. Okay, great. That would be wonderful. Um, and again, we're just, the survey was um, just a brief survey to touch base with who is actually still in the group or who is um, on the calls or receiving the emails. We did not get a huge response. We only got 10 responses. And uh, most of the people were the people who are this, the same five that come on the calls. Most people are interested in developing those best practices and working with the, you know, the GitHub flow um, to help that out. Again, it's just our job now to figure out how to make a system that people can actually do that with. Um, most people are technical writers. They just want to help with developing the documentation. Um, you know, the vote people, you know, right now like the leadership, but again, in the next survey, we're going to build out, we're going to ask for more volunteers and vice chairs. Um, but that basically was the survey. And then I guess that's about it for us. We just, again, need new members. Um, so, you know, all our uh, meetings are recorded and they're, the agendas and the recordings are posted on the, on, on the wiki page. So, so, you know, any input, any way to get new members, we're open for all suggestions and please join our calls on every other Monday. That's about it for me. Thank you. All right. Thanks for volunteering, Bobby, and thanks for the update. Uh, what you say about volunteers is pretty much what, what we see across the working groups. You're going to end up with sort of a power law of active involved uh, participants and then uh, less involved participants uh, for the sort of the remainder of that group. So one of the things uh, we were talking about from this, Dan, is asking that most of the teams um, whoever is doing their documentation, joining that gr this group so that we can talk about the best practices across the projects and create some better guidelines for other projects and to help each other on it. And so that's kind of the recruitment that we're looking for from the TSC. Okay, yeah, and I think uh, a way to be effective with that is to communicate then to those people what, you know, what the impact of that time is. Uh, everybody is, uh, you know, trying to get the, the most out of their time. So what is showing up to a meeting to talk about the, the work going to do for, for each of the, the projects? I, I think the hard part is knowing who even to contact in all of those projects because we don't really have that always clearly documented out. And so we basically have to blast the entire list to find that out. 
Uh, a little detective work that, that you might be able to do is look for the commits in GitHub on the documents. Uh, and then you can kind of see who's actively involved in that document creation for each of those projects. Will do for the ones that have the docs. Yep. <laughs> 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 you, you can just hit up the project leads too, right? And say, hey. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's who one should, of the reasons. Who should be doing documentation on your project? Right. And that, that's one reason why I really wanted to bring it up here at the TSC because it's my easiest way to like get everyone all at once. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, thanks again. Um, let's go ahead and, and keep moving on in our agenda. So the next one is um, Dave's on the line to talk about the CICD committee. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'll keep this brief. Um, in light of our CICD discussion last TSC call, um, the community architects team got together. We decided that um, spinning up a committee to handle the CICD recommendation was probably the logical next step. Now I'm calling this a committee because a couple things are different from um, the other groups that we put together here. Uh, the goal is to have a deadline of like early to mid June and to produce a report slash recommendation to the TSC about um, our recommend or sorry our requirements and what are the possibilities for addressing the CICD setup here for Hyperledger. Um, I've already put it on the calendar uh, starting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, and it's gonna meet weekly for 30 minutes, and um, I'm trying to keep the scope narrow enough that we can make quick progress and um, meet our goal. And I guess the, this announcement here is just to call for volunteers. I send an email to the TSC mailing list a couple days ago and I'm looking for people who are very interested in this who want to participate go ahead and email me and I'll looking forward to get going okay thanks Dave uh, clearly an important set of uh, requirements will come out of that so I hope there's good engagement from each of the projects All right, uh, I know that uh, not everybody had had a chance to review the URSA report before the meeting. It looked like about half of us had, had gone through it. Uh, URSA is still pretty young, so there's not, um, uh, I guess I should say there's still a lot of formational stuff going on there. Uh, does anybody have additional topics that they want to dig into? I, I had a question, I was just actually, searching through some of the, the mailing list to see if maybe it was answered, so apologies if I'm a bit out of date. Um, but I remember from the definition stages of the ERSA project, um, there was this idea that we'd have uh, tiered levels of uh, how much we trust the library we're calling out to, um, and there might be some experimental stuff written in pure Rust, um, but most of the things would be calling out to uh, the better established C libraries. Um, in the specific case of, I see this ED25519 and the uh, SACP uh, 256K1 implementations in there now, um, which, uh, so the SACP appears to be written straight up in, in Rust, and the other one depends on Atari Labs implementation. Um, it's kind of nice, I think, to, to see the pure Rust implementations, but I'm just wondering what, uh, what, what, what level of trust based on the maturity or, or, or use in the wild can we associate with, with those two signature algorithms in particular. So, hey, Silas. Um, so I guess I'll take that question. So in the cryptographic community as a whole, we're seeing more and more interest in just people building uh, secure Rust implementations. Uh, so the prospect of, of building something mostly in Rust um, is is it is becoming more likely and more possible, uh, particularly for a lot of the um, a lot of the newer and more exciting stuff. Um, so, like the most trusted bulletproofs library that I know of, for example, is coded in Rust. 
Uh, uh, I, go ahead. Yeah, this is Dan. So maybe if I understood your question a little bit differently, Silas, the, the libraries that it's hooked up to uh, were meant to be the most robust ones that we knew of, uh, which were not necessarily the pure Rust implementations, but the pure Rust implementations for those two uh, were meant to provide a, uh, a different build option for if you wanted to go uh, and then to support things in the browser and, and, and things like that. But uh, for the, the SecP library, for example, that, that should be linking directly to the Bitcoin library, which is the most robust that we're aware of. And uh, the Edwards curve, I think, should be coming from um, Libsodium. If I'm remembering right. Uh, okay, so, so those options are still in there. Yeah, I mean, the the the, the tenor of, of of that question was really. Um, I think I, I remember asking or, or hearing about it at the time about the, the, the choice there. Um, and uh, I mean, I was I was actually keen to see some pure Rust stuff done. So that's nice on the one hand. But I also remember being previously kind of reasonably convinced by the argument. Oh well, yeah, we'll use the. Uh, the existing um, BTC libraries say, um, but sorry, are you saying that, that both are actually available? Yeah, so the idea is we're, uh, we're working, we actually have RFCs for these right now, um, but the idea is we're going to, you're going to be able to use whatever you want and you're just going to be able to change your implementation uh, with the simple, essentially conf parameter configuration change. Um, so it'll be like, you know, uh, one line somewhere that you can just change your setup uh, and switch between implementations. So the, idea, the the goal is that you can use whatever you want pretty much interchangeably. Okay, cool. Any other uh, questions for the URSA update? I was just curious. Um, Dave had sent out mail yesterday about Rust not being as safe as people think, and I haven't really digested it at all, but I didn't know how that impacts any of our projects. And, and since we were just talking about Rust for URSA, I don't know if people have had a chance to look at that. Is I guess it's more uh, a sense, false sense of security, maybe? So I haven't read the particular article that you're talking about. I'd be very keen to read it, but um, I think that it's natural for people to make those claims because there's a lot of hype around Rust security. And I'm guessing, and I'm actually, I'm willing to bet that they're going to highlight a couple of, like if you combine a couple small corner cases that are built into Rust, you can do some unsafe things. But um, in general, the compiler is, I still have, I, I guess what I'm just saying is I still have all the world of confidence in Rust and its ability to check things. It, it, like all tools, right? You can misuse them. I guess. Um, or, but, sorry. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I want to read this article. And, and if we're really curious, I can read through it and address it on the TSC mailing list. I thought he said you sent it out, Dave. I sent it out. What? I didn't send anything out. <laughs> okay. Um, with Rust, it's, it's common, well, it's common a lot of things to go through a foreign function interface and, and you can break things in, in that the language is pr trying to give you easy. Uh, oh. For. So I, I think that Yes, I did send cool. stuff out. I did send stuff out about foreign function interfaces. Those yeah. are really hard to get right, mostly because you're exposing Rust to the bad features of other languages. Right. Um, yeah, we, we've been grappling with that with the URSA library. And uh, it, the problem is, is that Rust guarantees only go out to the Rust boundary <laughs> where the Rust code stops. Um, and there's some strategies that are coming out of like Mozilla security on how to deal with that. And that's the article I set out. So I'm still super excited about using Rust though. Okay, Thank great. You. Well, uh, I'll just put in a plug then that one of the things that, that 
will help URSA as we're starting to take the shape with some of these RFCs and design decisions is having well-informed requirements, um, not you know sort of vague things like we would like private transactions, but um, more concrete things like we've got a, a use case for a certain kind of anonymous credential or something like that. And that can help us make sure that those APIs that we're developing um, uh, will work well with those use cases. So Chris uh, mentioned at the head of the call here that he's already written up the, the fabric update. So I have not taken a look at that post yet, and I'm not sure if others have, but uh, I'm, I'm open to using uh, some of our time here and we can get ahead on, on next week's agenda. I think we yeah. need to be careful with that because I, I know some people were waiting for that update and didn't get on this call because they didn't know that it was on the agenda yet. Oh, okay. So well, that, that's the only problem I'm with just, that is. Yeah, I just thought we could expedite. You want to talk about it to, twice, Chris? I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's not, a, there's not a lot to talk about, really. I mean, we had, um, uh, we, we did uh, publish our release candidate for 141, uh, and we expect next week to actually, um, push it out, although I suspect that uh, that'll happen probably after the TSC call, um, uh, you know, towards the end of the day. Um, we uh, actually have, um, I guess, increased the diversity of the maintainers because we retired a couple and one of the IBM maintainers left IBM. And um, so, uh, the, the, the ratio is, has gone, uh, up in favor of non IPMers. Um, let's see anything else. Uh, you know, th things are going smoothly, right? Uh, we actually do have some healthy, uh, and substantive contribution ideas coming in from others in the community. There's a CLI proposal. There's a refactoring of the validation pipeline proposal to incorporate new forms of validation. Um, and there's some performance improvement. Um, uh, epics, uh, or I, I should say stories that are tied to an epic on performance. Um, and, uh, um, you know, keep chugging along, so to speak. We do expect to have an alpha of the 2.0 also published next week. And that'll include the, uh, the new refactor of, uh, chain code lifecycle, which is the major reason why we're calling it a 2.0 because the APIs are changing. Um, and, uh, you know, we welcome people to kick the tires on, on that. And of course the one for one, I, I should have mentioned that actually include, includes the raft uh, consensus. And actually there's a, a nice performance boost because we can keep latency much lower with raft than we did with Kafka. That's about it. Okay, great. So um, as Salona pointed out, we'll probably still keep, yeah, that's uh, fine. This on the agenda for next time. We're not going to really go through the report details, but it'll give people an opportunity to ask questions yep. after they've reviewed the report. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so I'm not going to keep people on, on the phone any longer, but I will ask that you take a look at the backlog items that we've got there, including the uh, project readiness for 1.0 that uh, Hughesby is working on, and make sure that you've got thoughts and input together on uh, what we define around 1.0, and then uh, uh, Mark, what is the gist of the overall engagement in projects topic there? That has to do with, um, you know, a bunch of projects and working groups have had declining attendance. Um, and so it's just, you know, in particular, it started as PSWG, but I, I think I've seen it across some other projects too. So it's, it's sort of a community health as well. I think overall, some of the numbers are down. Um, and it's not, not a diversity thing per se. I mean, that's part of it, but in general, just, you know, are there things we can be doing to improve participation? Which I think we've already sort of indirectly mentioned a couple of times on this call, right? Okay, great. I'd also like right. people, I'd also like to remind people that we can also add other topics of discussion 
uh, to the backlog as well. So if there is another topic, just like Mark is um, bringing up the fact that he sees the problem and we would like to see about how to fix it, um, that's the kind of input that I would that I greatly value. So if y'all have some stuff, please let me know, especially for my team. All right, well, with that, I think we can wind up today's call and give everybody a half hour back. And, and again, please use that half hour if, if possible for uh, some of those topics in the backlog. Oh, I, I just, I was trying to unmute myself and stumbling. Um, there was a proposal sent to the TSC, I think last night, um, for <clears throat> adopting a, uh, 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 translation, page. translation proposal. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's similar to what other projects have used in the past, like OpenStack and so forth. Um, I appreciate if people could give it a look. We've, we did review it in the fabric maintainers call yesterday. Um, and it seems pretty reasonable. The nice thing would be if we could, you know, make a deal with um, the company that has the tool because they, I think they do have a, a policy of giving it gratis to people that are working in an open source project. <clears throat> so I don't know, Solana, if we can reach out to TransFX to see about licensing. But if we can do that, then it might be nice if we can get agreement across the document landscape. Most of the projects that are using uh, Sphinx would would sort of fit right into this proposal. So, so when I looked, they didn't have anything on their website about doing that. Like I they had nothing link. actually written out. No, about giving it. I sent to, you a link. To about donating to open source. Um, yeah, I think you just need to contact them. It it says that they offer a license to open source projects. Didn't say you know like what the criteria was or anything. Okay, so we can we can add that proposal to the backlog and give people a, a chance to research yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, so thanks again, everybody, for your time. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Joe.